Hi, I'm Bri. This is an extension of my Philosophics blog at http colon slash slash philosophicsblog.wordpress.com, where I write about philosophical topics that I find interesting. I also engage in political and economic conversations. You can support my work by clicking like and support this channel by clicking subscribe. If you want to be notified when I post new content, click the bell icon. I also have a Patreon account linked below in the description. The theme of this Institute of Art and Ideas video is, should we move away from postmodernism? At the start, I feel as usual, that the definition of postmodernism is nebulous, and the four agree, methinks. Toward the end, Hilary Lawson concedes that key actors tied to the early postmodern movement denied being postmoderns, singling out Foucault and Derrida. More on this. Keep reading. Julian Beghini, the bloke sat on the left and whose positions I am only getting familiar with, starts off the clip. He makes some points, some of which I agree with, and others not so much. He makes a play at claiming that there is some objective truth to be attained, following on with the statement that without this notion, it's anything goes. I disagree with both of these assertions. Then he cites Thomas Nagel's The View from Nowhere, wherein he posits that subjectivity and objectivity are extrema on a spectrum and that experience is somewhere in between. This conforms to my beliefs, but there are two provisos. First, the extremum of objective truth is unattainable, objectively speaking. Moreover, as I've written before, we have no way of adjudicating whether a given observation is truer than another. It seems that he leaves it that we don't need to know the absolute truth to know true enough, but I think this is both a cop-out and wrong, but not too wrong for pragmatism to operate. For example, not mentioned in the clip, I can imagine that physicists feel that Einsteinian motion physics is truer than Newtonian physics, especially as we need to take measurements nearer to the speed of light. In my thinking, this might provide a better approximation of our notion of the world, but I can also conceive of an ideal, non-materialistic perspective where both of these are rubbish from the perspective of truth. I feel that people tend to conflate truth with utility. Julian makes an interesting point about semantics with the claim that some people define certain things in such a way as to not possibly be attainable, and then claim victory. But what are his three examples? Free will, the self, and objectivity. If you've been following me, you'll know that I might be in his crosshairs because I tend to be in the camp that sees these concepts as sketchy. And to be fair, his claim of defining something in a manner to keep a concept out of bounds, is the other side of the same coin as defining something in such a way as to get it into bounds. I've spoken at length about my position on free will, but I am fairly agnostic and don't particularly care either way. I feel that the cause of sui argument as it applies to human agency is more important in the end. The self is different to free will in so much as it's a construction. As with any construction, it can exist, but it's a fiction. Without interacting with Julian or reading his published works on the self, if there are any, I don't know how he defines it. And here we are, discussing objectivity. Given Nagel's objective subjective polarity, it seems they want to paint postmodernism as claiming that everything is subjective and that science, and religion, hold claims to objectivity. Hilary Lawson, the geezer on the right, takes a position between extremes, but he denounces Julian's claim about objective truth, noting that many people, especially of religious persuasions, make claims on truth that are diametrically opposed, ostensibly labeling the same object simultaneously black and white. And the object for all intents and purposes is red. I've gotten out of order, but Julie Bindle makes some good points on feminism and suggests that the philosophical feminists, may I call them feminists? No? Okay, such as Judith Butler have set women's rights back, by claiming that the category of woman is invalid. Mini Salami defended Judith by noting that Butler has helped constructively in some ways and citing Simone de Beauvoir, that woman is a category established by men to create the other sex. Still, Julie, not incorrectly, states that without a category, women, or whatever collective term one decides is representative, cannot be afforded legal protections, because law, as facile as it is, is all about categories and classes. Hillary re-enters the fray and states that it is not acceptable for one person to claim that their lived experience is all that is needed, just because that is their truth. To be fair, this feels like a bit of a straw man argument. Perhaps I need to get out more, but I am not familiar with anyone credible making this claim. I enjoyed watching this clip and processing the information. I hope you do as well. If you have any comments, I'd love to read them. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Consider subscribing to this channel. If you like this video, click like so I can get a signal that you want more. If you want to be alerted when I publish more videos, click the bell icon. I'm Bri. This is my YouTube channel, 
and I blog at http colon slash slash philosophicsblog.wordpress.com. Check there and check back here for more content updates. Cheers.